Welcome to lesson five. So today, just like the beginning of always, we're going to pause the video and work through our activity one and two, um, and then come back and see if you did them right. First problems, you are just multiplying and simplifying. Activity two, you have to find our max, min, mode, range, and median for each set of data. All right, so number one, when we multiply top times top, we get three. Bottom times bottom gives us 12, but I need to simplify. Three and 12 both have a, a factor of three, so my final answer is going to be one over four. Number two, top times top gives us four. Bottom times bottom gives us 16. Four and 16 both have a factor of four, so when I simplify, I get one over four. Number three, top times top is 12, bottom times bottom is 24. These both have a common factor of 12. So when I simplify down all the way, I get to one half for my answer. All right, now I'm gonna show you a little shortcut too that's gonna help out. If you ever have three over three, for example, we know that thing equals one. So if I look at number one again, I'm just going to rewrite because top times top it doesn't matter if I do 3 times 1 or 1 times 3. Bottom times bottom, it doesn't matter if I do 4 times 3 or 3 times 4. I'm going to rewrite this like that. All I did was change the spots for that top 1 and that top 3. 3 over 3 is 1. My answer is 1 fourth, which is what I got right there. That works every time. It's going to help simplify if that does show up. Like in number three, it shows up, the fours would cancel each other out. That's what we say. We say it cancels each other out. It simplifies out to one. That would leave us with a three over six, which we still need to simplify, but that's a pretty easy thing to see as one half. Might be a little bit easier than some of the other numbers you'd see that are bigger. So that's a little bit of a shortcut you could, you could use. So activity two, number one, the numbers are already in order, so that's nice. Our max is nine, our min is one, so our range is eight. Nine minus one is eight. Our mode, I've got a two that shows up twice, nothing else shows up more than once, so our mode is two. And then our median, small is big, go back and forth, crossing off. Four is our median. Number two, Again, they're in order. Our max is 12, our min is three, so our range is nine, 12 minus three. Our mode, nine shows up a whole bunch of times. So our mode is nine. Okay, our median crosses off small, big, small, big, small, big. I'm left with nine for a median. Nine was a very popular number that time. And then number three, our maximum is 14, minimum is five, so our range is nine. There's no mode. I actually write the words no mode because every number shows up exactly once. All right, and then I go back and forth, cross off, cross off. I'm down to two, okay, eight and 10. So eight plus 10 equals 18. If I take 18 divided by two, I get my median, which is nine again. All right, so today, lesson five, we're gonna be talking about dividing fractions. We've already done a little bit of dividing with fractions. Um, we're not actually dividing fractions yet. So we're gonna see how that all works out. So a quick reminder, when we do div division with whole numbers, we take 12 in this case, and we divide it into groups size four, and our answer is how many groups we have. If I do the same with fraction, I have zero through five, and I'm dividing into groups the size of one half. So I have two groups for every one, right? Because one half and one half makes one. And I would add up to a total of 10 groups. It's the same idea. It's how many groups of this specific size are we getting, all right? Now, it's a little bit more confusing sometimes um, because there's fractions involved. Like, that's completely understandable. So if I do 3 fourths divided by 1 fourth, I have 3 fourths. So I have one, two, three groups, all the same size that are one fourth. Or if I kind of flip that around, it's I have groups the size of one fourth and there are three of them. So there's a shortcut for dividing so you don't have to draw pictures all the time. I'm gonna have three bullet points. I'm going to have keep, I'm going to have change, and I'm going to have flip. So for this problem right here, 4 eighths divided by 1 fourth, I'm going to keep the first one. 
I'm going to change the division sign to multiply, and I'm going to flip the second fraction. So when I flip it, the 4 goes from the bottom to the top, the 1 goes from the top to the bottom. So 4 eighths divided by 1 fourth is the exact same problem as 4 eighths times 4, or times 4 over 1. So now I multiply, 4 times 4 is 16, divided by um, 8 times 1 is 8, 16 divided by 8 is 2. Okay, so if I had broken up that 4 eighths into the number of fourths, I would have two groups. So I'm going to keep the first one, so keep, change to multiply, flip the second. We always flip the second, we never flip the first. When I multiply straight across, top times top is 12, bottom times bottom is going to be 24. Okay, we showed earlier today that if I divide these by 12 on top and bottom, I get 1 half. 1 third, I'm going to keep the first divide it by, I'm going to change to multiply, and flip that 5 over 6 to 6 over 5. Top times top is 6, bottom times bottom is 15. I do not have any common factors. Oh, I do, I made a mistake, didn't I? I have a common factor of, well, this is why it's a good habit to get in to write out all of your factors. I just got very excited and was on a roll, I wanted to keep going. But there's a common factor of 3. So I'm going to divide both of those by 3 to get 6. Divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. My final answer is 2 over 5. All right. So go through these problems, answer them, pause the video and answer them, and then see how you did. Um, for the first part, when it just says blank groups of blank are needed, this first blank is the answer. The second blank is going to be the thing you're dividing by and then just tell me the answer realistically i want to know the answer activity two is the same idea it's rewrite that do that keep change flip and then simplify your answers all right so if i have five eighths divide into group size of one eighth i've got one two three four five groups of one eighth are needed so it tells me this equals five okay 5 over 8 times 8 over 1 is 40 over 8, which equals 5 over 1, which is 5. Number 2, I have 4 thirds, the size, and I'm dividing into groups size of 1 third, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 1 third are needed. Okay, I know that means this equals 4, so 4 thirds times 3 over 1 is 12 over 3. 12 divided by 3 is just 4. So keep, change, flip. The actual process we're using down here, keep the 3 fifths, change to multiply, change to 5 over 1. 3 fifths times 5 over 1 is going to be 15 over 5. Okay, you can divide top and bottom by 5, or you can just realize that 15 divided by 5, that's what this is actually asking, is just 3. Number 2. Keep 1 eighth, change to multiply, flip to 6 over 1. When I multiply that 6 over 8, I can divide top and bottom both by 2 to get 3 fourths as an answer. Number 3, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. So when I keep, I have 2 over 1, change to multiply, flip to 2 over 1. I have 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, 4 over 1 if I did 2 times 2 and 1 times 1, which is just 4 as an answer. All right? So that's pretty much all we got because now you've got your quiz time. So make sure that you go back to your homework folder and complete Lesson 5 homework, and then you complete your quiz however your teacher told you he wanted that done. All right? I hope everybody has a great day and looking forward to the, the next section with you guys.